a Tesla semi truck burst into flames on I-80, closing it for hours, and a cyber truck crashes in Texas, ending in tragedy. It seems lately when you hear road closure, Tesla, and fire, the first instinct is, where in the California is that happening? And that's exactly where this happened, between Sacramento and Reno on I-80 Monday. Around 3 a.m., a Tesla semi-truck went off of the roadway and crashed into some trees. Unfortunately, the resulting fire ended up causing a road closure that went on for 16 hours. And it's a massive 900 kilowatt hour battery pack Looking at images and the ERG, you can see there are three large battery packs between the front and rear wheels of this vehicle. You have to understand when we design electric vehicles, you have to protect those battery cells from damage because they don't like mechanical damage. If there's a crash, if there's a big enough impact to penetrate inside of the battery box, crushing those battery cells, they're gonna go into thermal runaway. And that's likely what happened here. Now the NTSB did open an investigation and it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that because there's a significant amount of damage to this vehicle. It's a bit crazy, fire crews actually called in air support. They brought in a fixed wing tanker to dump fire retardant on the forest around this vehicle because initially they had vegetation on fire and they were worried about starting a wildfire. Early on in this incident, crews expected to open up the highway right around 8 a.m. They ended up being on scene fighting this fire for 16 hours. And you can see the crews here, they've got full turnout gear, full SCBA, flowing a large quantity of water on this battery. In a traditional fire, you'd expect all that white stuff to be steam, but that's likely the batteries off-gassing while they're in thermal runaway. The crews float a significant amount of water. And when you're on the highway like this, you don't have a dedicated water supply. So in this case, the fire department had to bring in their own water. You can see a porter tank set up right here. A water tender will bring the water in, fill up that tank, and then go fill itself back up again. It's a long and tedious process, and it takes a significant amount of resources. After the fire was under control, they had to use heavy wreckers to pull that semi-truck out of the brush and get it loaded up onto a flatbed. Now, they did wrap a fire blanket around that semi-truck as a precaution. The wrecker transported that semi-truck back to a Tesla facility in Nevada for examination. As a precaution, a fire truck did follow that wrecker to the Tesla facility, but crews weren't certain if they're going to follow it all the way into Nevada or stop at the state line. At about 7 p.m., they opened up the road 16 hours after the initial crash. The Cybertruck incident, however, was far more tragic. In this incident, the Cybertruck left the roadway and crashed at a high rate of speed into a concrete culvert. The vehicle immediately burst into flames, and unfortunately, the driver didn't make it out. This is a big fear that I have with electric vehicles, and it goes back to the design of the electric vehicles. Ultimately, a Tesla Cybertruck, the battery is designed extraordinarily well. When we design these batteries, there's a lot of work that ensures that the side pole impact, the front rear impact, the underside impact, it all protects the driver. You have those crush zones, but it also protects those battery cells because again, we don't want those battery cells to be mechanically damaged. And when you look at the Cybertruck battery, there's a significant void space between the rocker panel and where those battery cells actually start. They are protected extraordinarily well. And in this picture, you're seeing the battery upside down. There's also a large void space between the battery cells and the underside of the vehicle. That will also keep those battery cells protected from damage. Realistically, we don't go to a lot of extrications anymore. Newer vehicles do a really good job of protecting the occupants. However, the design criteria, the specifications around these battery box structures, they're only designed to 35, 45 miles an hour, right in that range. So when you start looking at high speed collisions, the types of energetic crashes that we're going to when we actually have to cut somebody out of the vehicle, that's where I suspect those batteries will burst into flames. And if you've got an occupant trapped, it's really not gonna be a good day for them or the first responders arriving at that incident. One thing I keep seeing time and time again, that these batteries burn so hot in these electric vehicles, 5,000 degrees, half the temperature of the sun. It's just not the truth. These vehicles burn about the same temperature as any other vehicle on the road today. Lithium ion batteries aren't so special that they burn extraordinarily hot. They just burn extraordinarily fast. And that heat release rate is different for an electric vehicle compared to a combustion engine vehicle. 
I'm currently a technical panel member with the Fire Safety Research Institute in a three-year study looking at electric vehicle fires. The temperature data, the heat release data, those are just few of the things we're looking at when we're looking at these types of fires, how they compare to combustion engine vehicles. To learn more about that study, click this link right here.